Well, hello, everybody. It is 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Depends on where you are in the United States. So welcome, everybody. And I see that Angie is in here and Todd Rainey is here and Teresa's in here and she got her octopus. She gave me a suggestion on my other channel, Fuse Glass Artwork, about making octopi. That's, I guess, the plural of that. And anytime somebody gives me an idea that I haven't made before and I do it on my, you know, on a video, then I send them one of them too, besides giving one away. So they were so fun to make. Oh, and look who's here also, Ann Dale. Hi, Ann. How are ya? I hope everybody had a fabulous fabulous Easter this weekend. And they had some time to reflect and good times with family and friends. And Christine is here too. Hello, hello from Kelly. <laughs> oh, and Doug's here. And Jake is here. Well, hello, guys. How are you? Welcome. Oh, and even John is here. That's just so fun. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Jeannie is here. Hello. And I just appreciate you guys coming into my live stream on Monday nights. It is hot here. Um, Christine says it's the first time she's without a quiver, my quiver home. It's, um, it's interesting in our lives, isn't it? How things... You know, I was reflecting on Easter this, this weekend. And it was, you know, because you look over your life and how God's moved you in your life and what you've done and what you think and how you've changed. And it's just fabulous. I was one of the greeters at church yesterday morning. I've been doing it this month. And they had an extra service because it's Easter. A lot more people come, you know. And... Um, it was packed. You know, they literally had people directing traffic. There were so many people. It was craziness. Oh, and look who's here. Shannon, how are you? I'm heading to bed, but wanted to pop in and say hello. Well, hello. Awesome. That is so fun and nice of you to do that. And everybody say hi to Shannon. <laughs> and Teresa S is here too. Awesome. Um, today's topic is what vegetables can you not live without? So that'll be a fun topic tonight because I love vegetables. Um, note, tomorrow actually is my father's birthday and he is going to be 91 years old tomorrow. He, Him and my mom are driving over to Tucson. My dad just has a... Um, appointment with the doctor and then they'll be back on the 20th so he's actually going to be gone on his birthday but we're going to go out to dinner on Thursday and it will be fun you know 91 years is a good life and so I'm totally excited that um he's going to be 91 years old and he is in good health he is having a, a checkup he has had for a long long time an aneurysm in his stomach area and it hasn't ever had given him any problems and it's still not giving him any problems but the doctors decided that they just want to do a couple tests and so he's going over there and they'll decide if they want to because i guess you can fix the kind he has and so they'll decide what they want to do and farmer steve is here how are you look at that icon he has and Bomber Steve, what kind of snake is that? Thank you so much. Um, it is amazing, Shannon, that 91 years old. You know, I I always think that, you know, if you can get past 75 years old, you have had a good life. <laughs> and so being 91, um, I was telling him he could have 20 more years. So I, I totally believe that. Mama Steve says, I can't live without potatoes, pumpkins, corn, and broccoli. Oh, that's interesting because we are going to talk about that. And one, oh, Christi, Christine says, 
cucumbers, bell peppers, zucchini, squashes, and all types, types of salad greens. See, interesting on what people can't live without. For me, um, I guess what I would say that I cannot li live without. Oh, Steve's saying it's an eastern brown snake, second most powerful venom on the planet. And 90% of the snakes that I relocate out of people's yards. Oh, my gosh. You know, we have rattlesnakes. We have them in Arizona and we have them back home in Wyoming. But that, that's a dangerous snake. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, people can die from a rattlesnake, but really not usually they don't, you know, maybe way back when they do did, but anymore they don't. Oh, Doug's favorite vegetable, bacon. Do you grow that from seed, Doug? <laughs> That is funny. Oh, look at Doug. Nightbot likes you tonight. And he is featuring your channel. That is awesome. Jake wants to know, does bacon qualify as veggies? Doug thinks it does. <laughs> um, Todd loves vegetables. I love vegetables. Christine's laughing at Doug. That is awesome. Um. My favorite vegetables that I cannot live without, of course, tomatoes, big ones, medium ones, large ones, massive, big, huge ones like Ann Dale likes to grow. In fact, I'm going to show you a little clip. And this is what I made with some of my green tomatoes. I did this the other day and it is a green tomato pie. You put cinnamon in it and sugar and some flour to thicken it up. And it basically tastes like an apple pie. Um, Doug, tomatoes are a fruit, <laughs> but most people consider them a vegetable. And so I am considering them a vegetable, though technically Doug is completely right that it is a fruit because it has those little seeds. And it's, you know, which strawberries are weird because the seeds are on the outside. Is that really a fruit? Hmm. Interesting. Let me pull that back down. I love your rattlesnakes. Very, very cool animals. I'd love to pick one up one day. They are a beautiful snake. I have to tell you that. Um, and they warn you. You know, some venomous snakes don't warn you. But they do the little rattle and it is good. <laughs> but I remember hiking when we were young and we'd come up on to these great big, huge rocks and it'd be sunshiny. So it was really warm on those rocks and there'd be rattlesnakes on there because they're basking in the sun. You know, the night was cool and the morning was cool and the sun comes up and you would find them on the rocks. Back home, I have a lot of garter snakes in my my gardens, especially my rhubarb, which would be a fruit or would it? Mm. <laughs> anyway, the leaves are huge, right? And in the morning you can come out and the, the garter snakes have been sleeping on top of the leaves. And that's always fascinating. I'll try to get a picture this summer when we get back home, when the leaves get big and green beans with bacon grease drizzled over them. See, John, I'm sure Doug would like that. And Ann says, tomatoes, tomatoes, and maybe tomatoes. Hmm, tomatoes. I probably grow more tomatoes than anything else I grow, which is, is totally awesome. And because I, I like growing different sizes of tomatoes and I like different tomatoes for different reasons. You know, maybe you're making sauces. Maybe you want slicers. And maybe you just want those ones that you can just go and pick them and eat them in the garden. The little ones. I have a whole bunch of atomics that are set on the, the plants down here. And little sun golds. They're orange. Oh, they're tasty. <laughs> oh, Shannon is leaving us. Have a good night. I hope you get a lot of rest. Anne says, we had to get rid of a giant 
cotton mouse snake yesterday in our yard. Ooh, dangerous one too, I, I assume. And Leanne is here. Hi, Leanne. Angie says that she can't live without potatoes. <laughs> I love your green potato, green tomato recipe videos. Never heard of green tomato pie, but I'm going to make one. And I, I was thinking, we were eating a piece of pie today. And I thought, I would assume that different types of tomatoes would change that flavor a little teeny bit. And so this summer, I thought I would make some little mini pies and just see which ones I really like the best as a green potato tomato pie because they are tasty. In fact, I kept telling my dad, this week I'm making green tomato pie and he's never had it before. And he kept going, <laughs> you know, he's making this. <laughs> and then you'd roll his eyes a little bit. And so I bring him over green tomato pie. And then he has to tell me later, oh, I guess that was really good. And then he told everybody at Easter dinner, you had a, you should have tasted this pie that she made. <laughs> so tomatoes rock. <laughs> Hello, Redbird Farm. And Redbird Farm, I, am I, I'm not wrong that it's Brenda, correct? Shannon, little Frenchie in Big Texas. Hi, Ann, how are you? The two Anns are in the house tonight. That is awesome. <laughs> Jake says, I never met a vegetable I didn't like. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Oh, and Drops Family Garden is in. Hello. How are you? Um, Ann says, yes, cotton mouths are dangerous, especially to pets and children, but to adults too. That's what I was thinking. I actually don't think I've ever seen a cotton mouth in person, but I think I, I was trying to think that that's what I had read, that they were dangerous. And everybody's saying hi to everybody. Yes, Brenda, I thought that I, and then I, then I questioned it, you know, how sometimes when people just have, like, I have suburban homes that are Wyoming, Arizona, and Jules, go, <laughs> and he has always called me different names. And so then when he pops in, I, I call him all kinds of different names. <laughs> so anyway, my favorite vegetables I cannot live without, tomatoes onions, celery, and I put garlic in the, the family of onions because I love my garlic too. Um, oh, everybody's saying hi. And Carol is in. Hi, Carol. How are you? I chopped a cotton, cotton up with a hoe in Georgia. Oh, scary. Uh. <laughs> They, those snakes, they can startle you, you know? Now, I did a video a really long time ago. And I think it was one of my very first ones when I was doing the garden series. And it's it's what I call, and well, a lot of people call it, the fundamental trinity of vegetables. And you do two parts onion one part carrot and one part celery. And you're cooking them together, sauteing them together, but they are the base of some, basically every fabulous soup and all kinds of meat dinners. It, I should have copied the link on it. I should have got the link for you guys. It is fabulous, but it's two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery. And it's just called the fundamental trinity of vegetables. And in Europe, all, all kinds of recipes you find are using. And if they just say fundamental trinity of vegetables, that's what they're talking about. And I saw the vineyard chicks. Where are they? I'm sure I saw them. And there they are, the vineyard chicks. Now, which vineyard chick are we talking with tonight? KK, Trey, Bonky? We don't know. You're going to have to tell us. Doug's asking too. <laughs> Ann says, I love tomatoes. They they go with so many things. Salad with basil, cooked in 
ratatouille. Oh, I can't even talk. In relish. Uh, tomatoes are just fabulous. I mean, you can literally pick them off and just eat them in your, out of, you know, out of your garden. How fabulous is that? Um, can you make a video on preparing zucchini and squash in a way that it would not be mushy? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, I will, um, you know, when you're cooking them in the oven, it, it it's supposed to be soft. But like if you're going to like fry zucchini, it don't cook it as long so that it still has a little bit of that crunch in there. Um, but most of the time, if you're just going to add it to different things, it's, it is going to get that mushy texture to it because it is like, especially squash is supposed to fall apart when it starts to get cooked. And so, but there are some things, some ways to prepare it. Like when we put zucchini or thin sliced squash on pizza, it doesn't get mushy like that because it isn't in the pizza oven long enough for it to do that. And so that is always interesting. Um, I totally missed. Oh, look at that. It's all three of us. Hoo, 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 hoo. So girls, tell me your favorite. And Tim is in here too. Hello. Now, I couldn't have a garden without brassicas. And you might say, what are brassicas? <laughs> What is she talking about? Brassicas are the family that have um, cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, um, kohlrabis. Those are all brassicas. They're cool weather um, vegetables. But this summer, or this winter, it's not this summer. It's weird when you're down in Arizona. Um, my biggest cauliflower was 27 inches in circumference. I have never grown one that big in Wyoming, but most of them were about 20, 22 inches around. It was just like fabulous. And so, oh, I just love it when everybody's saying hi. Oh, Drops, Drops Family Garden says cabbage, kale, broccoli, etc. That's right. Brassicas. And they all basically grow the same. I mean, when you're starting them, you know, um, Almost always the seeds are round on a brassica. Um, Jill says that she's not hearing anything. Are you guys, can you hear everything that I'm talking? Because nobody has put that in there that they couldn't hear anything. Um, Jill, can you see if, um, do you have ear earbuds in when you're listening to it? Oh, see, like Leanne says that she can hear. Um, um, so Doug is hearing fine. The vineyard chicks are hearing. Christine is hearing. Okay. Um, maybe go out, Jill, and then come back in and see if that fixes it. Oh, Dee is in here too. Hi, Dee. How are you? I like that icon. I'm always interested in people's icons. It's just amazing what people do. And I change mine, you know. Sometimes I have things. Sometimes I have me. Um, statistically, they say that um, people like seeing people. But I don't keep it like that all the time. Lots of times I have things that say suburban homesteader or they'll say um, SHWA. I change mine all the time. Um, a French flavor base called, that is, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That is the fundamental trinity. Um, two parts onion, one part celery, one part carrot. It is just fabulous. Um, some people say to cut them large. Some people believe you should cut them very, very small. I cut them small, but just, it's not minute sizes, but it's, it is fabulous. So I'm scrolling down. Sorry, I hope I am not missing anybody. Um, oh, Donna's here. I did see. I was missing somebody. Donna, how are you? Um, Stella, 
Hello, coming in loud and clear. And um, I have gotten two or three um, of my tomato packages back because the addresses are not correct. And so if you are one of my members and for some reason you did not get a tomato package, I need you to send me your address again because there's something, um, maybe it was the post office, I don't know, but it's the address matches my card on what I wrote on there. Um, how many do I need? Well, that's on any given day, Leanne. Um, I have been over 68,000. I don't know how many times this month. Um, I think right now I'm down 16. Um, but it just goes up. It goes down. It goes up 30 or 40. It goes down 20 or 30. It has just been the craziest thing for the last month. And in fact, one day Doug sent me a message. Congratulations, 65,000 or 68,000. And I said, Doug, it has changed every day for the last month. It goes up above it. It goes below it. I, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> but I have talked to some other channels and the, the same thing is happening on their channel. So I don't know if YouTube is kind of weeding out some of them. Some of the things, people that don't ever um, do anything, that could be possibility. Oh, Brian is here. Hi, Brian. How are you? Brian, we're talking about our favorite vegetables we can't live without. Oh, my other favorite vegetable I cannot live without in my garden are pumpkins and squash. They are just like, how can you live without pumpkins and squash? They're fabulous looking plants. Um. It, it has just been amazing to me to learn, to grow all these different kinds of squashes and pumpkins. Now, most of the time, I don't let them trail all over the ground because I just don't ever have enough space. So what I have been doing lately is either I have a fence that they climb up over and back down. But most of the time, I have huge tomato cages that are really heavy duty. So I put the first one in there put the plant in there. Then I turn the other one upside down, zip tie it. And so it climbs all the way up, which is probably six feet or more. And then they come back down. It saves me space. You know, um, it's just, it's just crazy. And so when you have a limited amount of space, you have to think outside the box. You know, sometimes people have a trellis and they have their, their squash and their pumpkins go over, over top of them. It works perfect. Um, Brian, um, I talked to my brother and he says that he thinks that none of his bees survived. And he's talked to a whole bunch of different ones in South Dakota. And I know that you had told me before that you thought that Ohio had about 51% die off. So I just wondered if that was the same or if it had changed. We must be talking about the phone. I'm missing that. My 10-month-old grandbaby will not let me have my phone. <laughs> that is funny, Donna. <laughs> oh, so Ohio is at 55% loss. Now, I have two beehives at home and nobody there to watch them. You know, I mean, I fear that they live in trees and nobody watches them. But we have, back in Wyoming, we have had 30 below zero, and we've had 70 degrees this winter. And it has fluctuated up and down, and that is a hard thing on bees. Because they think it's turning to springtime, sometimes the queen will start to lay, they'll be working on the brood, and then it gets cold. And they won't move away from that brood, and it's just like, oh my gosh. And they can freeze to death. It's horrible. Um, and I just don't know what to do to protect them. You know, I, I read some articles and maybe Brian, you could tell me if you have read this. Um, oh, just one second, Brian, don't forget this. Sandy, would you do Wicked Awesome Gardening Collaboration? I will post your video on our community tab. 
it, um, is that the one, the five vegetables I can't live that I hate and the five vegetables I can't live without? Is that the same one, Leanne? Because I will do that if, if that's the same one for you. Because that would be to totally fun. And we're talking about vegetables we love tonight anyway. And, um, okay, so we're going back to Brian. <laughs> See, my brain, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, I tell you. Um, in Japan, in the mountains where they have beehives, they've been doing these things that um, underneath the beehive, it's built into the beehive that um, when it's cool at night, it runs to a certain temperature. So, so, so the hive basically stays the same temperature 365 days a year. So if it's too hot, um, it switches and it cools the hive. If it's too cold, it heats the hive. And so I'm wondering if that is something that would be an option. You know, if if I could figure out a way, because we have electricity at our house when we're gone, but it's, um, <laughs> Leanne says, yes, I'm shaking my head like you can see me. Yes, okay. Oh, and Charmaine is here. Hi, Charmaine, how are ya? <laughs> Brian says, my three survivors are doing good. I I want to end up with eight to 10 this year. That's a lot of honey. Um, yams and green beans, that's what she likes. Oh, City Girl Country Heart. Have you ever been on one of my lives before? That is awesome. I'm writing you down. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, what have, I, what have I been doing today in the garden? The pin does not work. Um, City Girl. I love that name. Country Heart. I'm going to look you up right after the, the live stream. Um, see, I start talking and then it's totally gone. Um, Stella. Stella. Um, this is a tough question, she says. Um, Stella, I sent you tomato seeds and they came back. And so I don't know if you have a different address than you went on Telegraph or I don't know. So I just need a different address because I sent I tried to send you some tomato seeds. And um I'll oh, see, I'm trying to do the catch up with everybody on the chat. Okay. So Donna says, um, Brussels sprouts and broccoli, brassicas. I see. I love brassicas. Um, city girl country heart is Terry. Okay. Terry, I'm writing that down too. Awesome. Now what have I been doing today? Because right now when we started the live, it was 96 degrees still. Seriously, 96 degrees. That is too hot to be, because I planned on moving my fig tree, planting a lemon tree, and moving a lemon tree. And then it got so hot. And I thought, yeah, I can do that. You know, because that is just way too much stress on, uh, on any kind of plant. You know, even if you're continually watering it, it's just too much. And so I thought, well, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. So I look at the temperature for tomorrow, 95. <laughs> but later on this week, it's down in the 80s. I'm going to move them then. So what did I do? Because I couldn't be in the garden other than I watered everything. Um, I made some of these. Now you may say, oh, that's her green screen is making it invisible. No, it's clear glass <laughs> because I have been making fun, crazy sun catchers, light catchers. And in fact, here's one. Let me show it to you. So this is one I just hung up. And so I made these fused glass birds and fused glass pieces. And then with all the mirrors, it kind of slowly spins in the breeze. And then the light fl flickers all over, all over the house onto the patio, onto the gravel. And so this is one I made the other day. 
And so today I'm thinking, well, I got all this extra little pieces of weird shaped glass from when I cut out fish and I cut out octopus, octopi. And so I thought, okay, what can I do with all those weird shaped pieces of glass? And so in my kiln right now are all these crazy people and crazy shapes and birds and all kinds of fun, silly things. And so <laughs> they're in the kiln. And then I did enough of them so that I could fill the kiln out again tomorrow. So my thinking is I can make some fun sun catchers with this. And when I send the, because I use fishing line on the backside and I'll just use a clear piece of glass, a strip of glass so that it'll hold together. And I can use, I have glue that I use and I use, um, you could use like a waterproof um, silicone that would work too. But this one I have been using, it um, it's made for glass. And the nice thing about it is that I had it hanging when it was days and days of 90 some degrees and it didn't move it at all. It was perfect. And so it was like, awesome. Oh, and look who's here. Debbie is here. Hi, Debbie. Um, I am behind a couple on your videos, but I will get all caught up on everybody's. And we are talking about, thank you, Leanne. See, you guys are perfect. Because everybody knows I don't like to go over 30 minutes. So you got five more minutes with me. Okay. Um, Ann says, does your kiln heat up your house? Um, no. My kiln is actually in our shed. And so if it's really hot out, like today, I just left the, the shed doors open. Plus, we have a whirly bird on the top. And Joe has added vents into the, the shed. And then back home, I literally have this fan and it's about oh probably a foot and a half by a foot and a half and it sucks the air out and so when I'm running my kiln I don't have to worry about it and it's still totally fine and it doesn't heat that up oh Jennifer is here how are you awesome Brian says I'm behind on videos that's life on YouTube isn't it <laughs> Blind guy, his wife, and their life. Hello. How are you? Um, oh, my. That community of strange people reminds me of the world. <laughs> I know. Aren't they funny? And I thought, oh, yeah, I can make some fun things with these. <laughs> and so this one isn't fused yet. So the paint, because I did see where it's white and these little dots, that's a, a special glass paint. And so when it dries, it's it's kind of matted. But when it goes in the kiln, it gets all shiny again, like when I first put it on. And I like weird, funky guys. So LP is here. Hello. How are you? Um, when you go back to Wyoming, the winds have been insane, 60 miles per hour, sometimes more here. I have been watching the weather back home, and it has been crazy windy. So we are leaving either, not this week, Wednesday, but either next week, Wednesday or Thursday. That's our estimated time. And so if everything goes good, that's when we're going to go. <laughs> and there's Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener. That's Debbie. She is one of my members. And everybody saying hi. I have too many awesome subscriptions now. I want to support everybody. See, this is a hard thing. That's why I switched all of my um, things to 99 cents because it, it can be way overwhelming too much, you know? And so that's just what you have to do, you know? So, um, I can't do without herbs in my garden, but for veg vegetables, I would say beans, fruits, and tomatoes. See, we love to grow beans, but almost always the beans that I grow are soup beans because that's what we use the most. I like beans, regular beans, green beans, 
it's not like I don't like them. But at our farmer's market, my one friend, he has huge, huge gardens. You know, he sells at the markets. And so he always has green beans. So I can just buy them from him. And so I grow the soup beans at my house because I want weird, unusual soup beans. And so that's what I do. Um, I thought Doug had said something to me. It's gone. I can't find it. It's gone too fast. Everybody is saying hi. You need to stop by the ranch on your way to Sandy's. That's right. Because Doug and Shelly need to come see me. Mentioning beans, I had a big pot of ham beans tonight. I love all the variety of, of beans. I, I did the whole recipe with the tomatoes, onions, and made a big, big pot, probably pot of buttermilk, a big pot of buttermilk cornbread. Um, maybe a big pot, big pan. <laughs> I love cornbread. I mean, seriously love cornbread. Hi, Dorothy. How are you? Can't live without carrots and tomatoes. See, staples. I love that. <sighs> Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Um, see, I keep telling Doug to come see us. And we need to come see them. But... I'm past my 35 minutes and there are so many live streams. I always hate to go past and have interrupt other people's live streams. So everybody, thank you so much for tonight. Um, probably big pan. That's probably what it is. Um, next week is our last Monday being in Arizona. So I'm going to talk about, um, the things I'm going to do when we get back to Wyoming, um, the very last things I'm doing, I have been checking off my list and checking off my list of things. If you've been following, I didn't do a video yesterday. It was Easter and I just ended up not. But when I get off here, I have to finish my video for day 11, the countdown to Wyoming. So everybody, I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much for stopping in. Um, Leanne, I will... Um, do that video. I'll try to do it tomorrow. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much, everybody. I so appreciate you. Make sure you give me a thumbs up because that always helps with my analytics. And everybody have a great night.